and once again hello to Books 101 on World Mythology. The last video I did was sort of a part one Near Eastern mythology books. It was just on Egypt. The, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the other four main areas that people talk about when it comes to Near Eastern myths and legends. Okay, now we did Egypt. The other big area that's involved with uh, with this subject, with this area, is Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia means, it's Greek for the land between two rivers, and it's in modern-day Iraq. And basically there's three great civilizations that existed in uh, ancient Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia. The oldest is Sumer. Uh, they spoke, uh, the, these are people who spoke, uh, spoke a very ancient language called Sumerian, so they're called the Sumerians. They lived in ancient Sumer. Um, they were the oldest civilization. They go back all the way to the beginning of, re, of recorded history. Um, after them came um, Akkadian speakers, spe uh, people who spoke a language that were called Akkadian. Akkadian is a Semitic language, and uh, they were called the Babylonians. And, uh, of course, they had their center at the great city of Babylon. After them came another uh, great uh, empire, uh, civilization and empire. They were known as the Assyrians, and they, uh, they had a capital at Nineveh. And uh, it's thanks to, um, basically, uh, there was one Assyrian king by the name of Ashurbanipal who had this uh, wonderful library, and uh, he preserved all of these clay tablets. Uh, with the with with uh, their writings on it that were preserved, and uh, thanks to them, we um, we now have thanks to that library, we now have a lot of literature uh, from Mesopotamia. The uh, the other area, uh, the third area of uh, Near Eastern myth is uh, okay. Egypt was first, Mesopotamia second. The third area is called Canaanite mythology. Uh, from the Bible, you probably remember that the Canaans were people that lived in and around the area of Israel. Uh, they they were Semitic people, uh, speak, speaking people who uh, uh, lived around in and around Israel, uh, uh, Syria, uh, Lebanon, maybe a part of Jordan. Uh, these peoples were some, uh, sometimes a group, a subgroup of these people are sometimes referred to as the Phoenicians. Uh, the Phoenicians were a maritime people. They actually gave us our the, the alphabet that we use actually originated from their writings, believe it or not. And they were a great sea trading people. They, uh, they actually are the founders of Carthage in Northern Africa. And uh, sometimes uh, the mythology is also called Ugaritic mythology because uh, there was a, an ancient city by the name of Ugarit that we, which is today called Ras Shamra. And today it's from the city that we have, uh, we have tablets that contain myths and legends from them. Okay, so that's uh, okay. That's three. The fourth area is actually a civilization that existed in modern-day Turkey. Okay, long before Turkey was Turkey, uh, there was simply this uh, big landmass, which is still there, of course. It's it's called Anatolia, and today Anatolia is is, is the the eastern is the is that whole uh, uh, Asian long portion of Turkey. And in ancient times, it was also called Asia Minor. And uh, at one time, there was a, 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 an Indo-European civilization there referred to as the Hittites. And uh, today, not too many people, unfortunately, know about the Hittites. But in their heyday, they were uh, a force to be reckoned with. At one time, they were second only to Egypt in power. Uh, but eventually, they were destroyed and uh, uh, we're just uncovering stuff about the Hittites to this day, uh, but they left some interesting mythology behind. Uh, the the last myth, uh, the last group uh, of uh, of Near Eastern mythology is actually Hebrew. Now, of course, we today we have the the, the Bible, and uh, but a lot of people don't realize that in addition to the Bible, which a lot of people see as uh, sacred and canonical, there's a whole bunch of other stories that have come out of. Uh, of, uh, of, the, of, of the Hebrew people uh, that are not seen as sacred or canonical. Uh, for example, you may have heard of Lilith. L Lilith was, uh, in the Bible we have Adam and Eve, but 
there's a legend also that Adam had a first wife before Eve, and her name was Lilith. And Lilith is actually also uh, a demon from Mesopotamia as well, but uh, these people shared ideas and different myths and legends floated around. But Lilith was, in, in uh, among the Hebrews, uh, she was believed to be the first wife of Adam. But they got into a fight as to who should be on top of who, uh, during sex and uh, she felt that she shouldn't have to be on the bottom so she got into a fight with Adam and she flew away and became a demon so not only was Lilith the very first woman she was the very first feminist um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that too okay so getting started in these videos I usually talk I usually like to talk about uh, what books to what general books to read on the subject to start with you can to get a, a general view of Near Eastern mythology and kind of what your appetite uh, there's this great little book called Middle Eastern simply called Middle Eastern mythology and it's by S.H. Hook uh, from the Assyrians to the Hebrews. This book is really great. It's it's uh, it's a little superficial. I mean, uh, the author basically just runs through very quickly in very short form all of the all of the major myths of all five areas. He uh, he starts with Egypt, uh, but you don't have to worry about the Egyptian part. I mean, you can read it if you want, but we did a separate video for that. And he goes to Mesopotamia, to the Canaanites, to the Hittites, and to the Hebrews. So in one simple little book. He covers just about everything. But it's, uh, like I said, it's just very quick retellings of the stories. Um, if you want a little more in-depth retellings and you want to spend a little more money and uh, you want something that has nice illustrations and a little more detail, there's uh, this is great book that's part of the Library of the World's Myths and Legends. And it's simply called Near Eastern Mythology and it is by John Gray. And I've mentioned this series before. It's a very great series. I've read all of, all of the books in this series. And this is, this is I, I really enjoyed when I read this book. It, it contains uh, just about uh, all of the major Near Eastern myths and they, they cover uh, they cover everything except Egypt, uh, but they cover everything else. And there's even a little a little Hebrew section in here. Another third one one last general book I'm going to mention, which I also kind of like, is part is uh, is a time life book. Uh, I've, I've mentioned this series before, Myth of Mankind. This particular book is by oh, it's by the writers of Time Life Books. That's all I can say on that. And it's simply called Epics of Early Civilization. Epics of Early Civilization, and a little inset here is Middle Eastern mythology, Middle Eastern or Near Eastern, and uh, and again, this does not have a does not have a Hebrew section, and does not have an Egyptian section either. It contains uh, the th it's all about the other three sections: Mesopotamia, the Canaanites, and the Hittites. Uh, so this is also a nice, beautiful little book. It's got great illustrations. It's got stuff on the culture and the religion, and uh, and uh, you know so. This is great. Okay, so these are three great general books on the subject. Now, getting into more specific books. Uh, there's this book by, okay, The Oldest Civilization from, uh, from Mesopotamia. Okay, I'm going to start with Mesopotamia. The Oldest Civilization is Sumer, or the Sumerian, and there's this wonderful book. It probably hasn't been surpassed to this day called Sumerian Mythology. Uh, a study of spiritual and literary achievement in the third millennium B.C., and it's by the greatest scholar. Well, I don't think he's alive anymore, but when he was alive, he was the greatest scholar from Sumer. And he even wrote a book called History Begins at Sumer. Uh, and it's Samuel Noah Kramer. And this book in Sumerian mythology is wonderful. It's absolutely great. It, it's the oldest stories to come out of uh, uh uh, to come out of Mesopotamia, um, including Gilgamesh, the the great hero Gilgamesh. But we haven't gotten there yet. The Sumerians gave us stories of Gilgamesh, but uh, the great epic of Gilgamesh is actually given in later literature, the Akkadian speakers, the people of Babylon, and that's this book here, the Epic of Gilgamesh. This book, uh, this particular edition is, uh, is by Penguin Classics, and uh, the author is... N. K. Sanders. This is uh, this is in prose. It's a uh, it's actually a uh, it's in prose. It's it uh, it's a very old translation. It seems to be very highly regarded because I, I, I see it in, in I see it referred to in many other books. It's the first one I read. I liked it. Uh, there are many many translations of the Epic of Gilgamesh. This is probably the most important work to come out of. Mesopotamia. It is just absolutely amazing. It is not only a an amazing epic. It's uh, it's the oldest epic in the world. It goes back almost to the beginning of recorded history. Like I said, the Sumer, uh, Bab, uh, Gilgamesh goes back to Sumer. 
but uh, the great epic that developed later is actually from uh, the Babylonians, uh, uh, the Akkadian, uh, the Akkadian speakers, and uh, it's it, it, I mean uh, the subject matter is just so pervasive. It, it, it's what we all have to do with. It's it's all about immortality and uh, the struggle to deal with uh, loss and. It's just, I can't say enough good things about this book. Uh, here's another edition of the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, this one's very interesting. It's illustrated. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's English verse rendition. It's not exactly a translation. It's sort of like a rendition by uh, uh, Danny P. Jackson. Danny P. Jackson. This one's very good. I, I, I liked it. It's illustrated. But like I said, there's, 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 there's many other versions. There's another version I read by Ferry, which I thought was very good. And uh, there's many others. Uh, another book to come out of uh, Mesopotamia, specifically Babylon, is this book called The Babylonian Genesis. Uh, now, uh, this is another very important work because uh, the Babylonians have their own creation myth. And... Uh, and uh, excuse me, uh, they have their own creation myth, uh, and uh, it has to do uh, a lot with how the world, how the universe was put together, and uh, and it, uh, it centers around their chief god. The Babylonians had a chief god by the name of Marduk, and uh, Marduk was uh, was worshipped at their at their main temple, and uh, basically it's about how the the gods created. Uh, there was this old group of gods and. Uh, and uh, there came this newer group of gods, and they fought. They didn't like each other, and uh, and uh, a great war occurred between the old gods and the new gods. And uh, and they and the newer gods had to call upon Marduk to protect themselves from these older gods. Uh, and uh, and this translation is by Alexander Heidel, and it's, it's very good. I think it's a I think it's a great book, and I think uh, I think it's it's a central reading. Um, another book. This one's put out by Penguin Classics. And it's also published by that other, uh, by the Epic of Gilgamesh uh, 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 translator, N.K. Sanders. And this is called Poems of Heaven and Hell from Ancient Mesopotamia. Uh, this book is great. Uh, this book uh, not only contains another rendition of the Babylonian Genesis, uh, but it contains uh, it contains uh, other great stories as well from Mesopotamia, especially the another uh, very important story called the the descent of uh, Inanna into the netherworld. Okay, that that's another very important myth. Uh, the later version from uh, the Babylon from Babylon would be the descent of Ishtar, but in the earlier Sumerian version, Ishtar is known as Inanna, and uh, it's it's a longer, greater version of the story. And uh, it's very important to modern-day Wiccans and women's spirituality groups uh, about this idea of the goddess of love going down into the netherworld and uh, trying to, uh, you know, for whatever reason, trying to get there to conquer it, maybe, and uh, and everything. So, so, uh, so this is great. Uh, Poems of heaven, heaven and hell from ancient Mesopotamia. Um, uh, another book that, again, more Mesopotamian stuff is this wonderful book uh, by World's Oxford World's Classics, and it is by uh, is is translated by Stephanie Dolly, and it's simply called Myths from Mesopotamia, and uh, it 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 has the creation, the flood, Gilgamesh, and others. Creation, the flood, Gilgamesh, and others. Uh, this book is really great because it it in one simple little book it simply has. Uh, so many, uh, 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 just about all of the major, not literally all of them, but so many of the major stories from Mesopotamia is in just this one book. It's got the ep Epic of Gilgamesh. So if you buy this book, you you don't have to buy the Epic of Gilgamesh. It has the, the creation story, the, Babylon, uh, the Babylonian Genesis story, so you don't have to buy this book. Okay, uh, It's got the descent of Ishtar. Um, and... Uh, uh, so this is this is really a great book. In one simple book, you got a lot of stories in here. Uh, moving on to Canaan, I really just have one, uh, just one book, and this is great. This is uh, this is uh, uh, stories from ancient Canaan. Okay, uh, there aren't too many stories from from Canaan, and so this little book has basically all of the, if not all the stories, all the important stuff. And this one is uh, translated by Michael David Coogan. Okay, so Michael David Coogan, stories from ancient Canaan. Okay, so 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 this this book is all you really need for the Canaanites. Uh, and finally, 
for for that last civilization I talked about the Hittites that uh, had their civilization in uh, in Anatolia in, in Anatolia modern day Turkey. There's this another very small little book that has all the stories because again they don't have a huge amount of myths, and it's simply this great little book called Hittite Myths, and uh, the translator is Harry A. Hoffner Jr. Harry A. Hoffner Jr., Hittite Myths. So after reading general those general books and you like what they said about the Hittites and you want to read more about them, go and hunt this book down and you will have all of the great myths in translation in this book. Now, um, now I, I, didn't, I didn't present any separate books just on Hebrew mythology, but don't worry, I didn't forget the Hebrews because I have this monstrous book on Hebrew mythology. It took me forever to read this one. It's an old book, but boy, you want to talk about putting so much of, 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 of Jewish belief, uh, ancient myths and legends that's outside the Bible in one big book. This is the book for you. I think this, this originally is three volumes, but I found a single volume. It's, it's part of a series called Myths and Legends, and it's, uh, it's ancient Israel. So Ancient Israel, Myths and Legends, and the writer is Angelo S. Rappaport. Angelo S. Rappaport, and the publisher is Bonanza. Yeah, this is quite a Bonanza, this book. Uh, it took me forever to read it. But, wow, this book is great. I mean, you know, I, I, uh, this is the end-all, be-all to, to, uh, to Egyptian, uh, to, not Egyptian, what did I just say, to Israeli, Hebrew, Jewish, myths and legends. Okay, now, uh, sometimes at the, end of, uh, at the end of this video, I don't do, always do it, but uh, in this case I'll do it. I sometimes have a hatchet list because I've, I've given... Um, uh, because uh, there's so many books I presented, I would say if you want to if you want to shave the list down a little bit, you know, I give you a machete list, shave it down. Absolute essential books. If you don't want to read all these books, I would say to start with, for general reading, I would say Near Eastern mythology. This book because this book has pretty much everything except Egypt, but that's okay. We did Egypt in another video, so but this book has a little bit of everything. Uh, it's wonderful and and all that. Um, if you're not going to read anything else, you have to read, where is it? If you're not going to read anything else, you've got to read the Epic of Gilgamesh. I mean, it is one of the greatest masterpieces. Um, do you know there's even a, a, a flood myth in here that's older than the, the story of Noah? It's, it's actually in this book, this, this older version, and, uh, and it's, it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, uh, I mean, it would be great if you want to read, if you, if, if you, get, if you get this book by uh, Stephanie Dolly, this is great because uh, it, it has so much in here. It's got, uh, it's, it's got the Epic of Gilgamesh, and it has the creation myth, which is also called the Babylonian Genesis, uh, this version. And it has uh, other, other great stories. But if you don't want to read that much, at the very least, you, you must read the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, and that's it. Uh, of course, the rest of the machete list is up to you if you, uh, if you, if, if you, if the, if the stories of the Hittite tickled your fancy, you may want to look for this book on the Hittites. If you want to know more about the Canaanites, there's this book here. But at the very least, at the very least, I think you should read the Near Eastern Mythology and the Epic of Gilgamesh. I know you're sick of me saying it, but i got to read this one. All right. Until next time, uh, I'll see you in my next video. Uh, happy reading.